Good morning. Uh, I'll be presenting our work on uh, right policies for host, has, host cash flash caches. Uh, uh, this is a joint work by uh, Ming Zhao, Ranjura Guaswami, Leonardo Marmol, and Ricardo Koller from FIU, and uh, Nisha Talagala and Swaminathan uh, Sundaraman from Fusion IO. <clears throat> Well, uh, typically, uh, virtualized environments are deployed on clusters of hosts connected to centralized network storage. But recently, there has been a trend towards more uh, degrees of consolidation. And uh, in order to, to reduce the load on, uh, on uh, network storage, um, many cloud providers have started to consider using a locally attached flash as caches. However, uh, Several researchers have recommended the use of uh, write-through caches and not write-back caching because of, uh, of the danger of using write-back in, ca in case of crashes. Um, before we start and to put things into context, uh, this is the architecture that we are referring to. We have an application or an application on top of a VM using an OS or a hypervisor. This is in a single host uh, with a locally attached uh, flash and all of this connected to network storage. And uh, in this paper, we assume that uh, loans are not shared by more than a host, and uh, more than a single host, and we don't assume uh, failures at the network side, only at the network storage side. We only assume uh, failures on the host. <clears throat> this is the outline of the presentation. I'll start showing some uh, performance data that motivates the use of write back caching. Then the two proposed write back policies that we we showed in the paper. Um, then some consistency analysis. Uh, and finally, uh, performance evaluation, uh, summary, and conclusions. <clears throat> so the, the advantage of caching a read is, uh, is unquestionable. Uh, by caching a read, we get a better performance and no possible, perform uh, no possible consistency risk. However, the situation with writes is uh, a bit more complicated. Uh, one option for writes is to use a write through policy where writes go synchronously to the network storage and to the, to the flash before being uh, notified to the application as completed. And uh, another option is to use write back where uh, writes go to the flash cache and then uh, application is uh, immediately notified of completion. And uh, writes to the network storage are just delayed or possibly lost in case of a crash. So just for, from this figure, it's not obvious whether uh, write back is going to perform better. For once, uh, we, have, we can see that uh, write back will have less latency for most writes. But uh, possibly, we are adding an extra read because the block might not be on DRAM anymore. And in the worst case, we might just be in delaying the, the, the writes to network storage and not, actually, and not actually reducing them. So, to see the actual benefit of using a uh, write back, we performed a simple experiment. We used uh, OLTP TPCC and we ran it uh, using a write back and a write through cache. Uh, we used a cache of uh, size approximately 80% of the working set size of, uh, OL of TPCC. And uh, we compare response time as seen by the users of applications and throughput as well. Uh, we used uh, a flash which is uh, in relative uh, 80 times faster in terms of uh, latency of uh, random writes than the, than the disk. And uh, we observed that the observed uh, response time is uh, 75 times faster in the case of write back and three times faster in the case of throughput for write back as well. Uh, the, this, the reason for only three times X is, is that uh, we didn't fully stress the, the TPCC system. But at least uh, from this, we think that this is, uh, there is a noticeable performance improving from using write back, so it should be considered. <clears throat> uh, we later studied these results and found that most of the performance benefits of write back coming, are coming from basically three, three characteristics. The first one is that uh, we are lowering the latency by not having to actually reach uh, slower network storage. Uh, the second is that we're able to coalesce writes and therefore reduce the amount of uh, write traffic to the network storage. And the final is that um, by uh, delaying evictions, we're able to batch them and send them in parallel to the network storage. And this, especially for uh, arrays of disk, is, is great because we get more throughput out of it. 
So until now, we just compare uh, right wing and right bike in terms of performance, but there are more dimensions in where to compare them. Uh, for instance, uh, consistency and staleness of the network storage. <coughs> So in terms of staleness, uh, if we use right back and, took a look, and we take a look at this, uh, the network storage at any time, we will see that it's actually in state uh, older than what we have if we read from the flash. That's staleness because of right back. And in the case of consistency, let's see what happens with right back with a, with a simple example. Let's say we used a journal file system and we perform a file deletion operation. This will be composed of uh, basically two operations. Uh, first, we need to uh, delete the entry on the parent directory list uh, corresponding to this file. And second, we need to uh, mark the block used by this file as free. And finally, in the case of a journal file system, we'll have a commit that says that uh, this transaction is actually ready and committed to disk. And again, let's say we use write back and uh, we crash just after the commit. And let's say we had some bad luck and uh, the, uh, this inode delete operation was out of order, was delayed, and we, we just got these two operations shown in the, in the figure. This will lead to an inconsistency. This is bad. Uh, sorry, uh, this, uh, the list of, uh, uh, the list of uh, files will show this file, but the, the list of free blocks will show the block used by the, by the file as, uh, as free. Um, in the case of write through, we wouldn't have this problem as, uh, network storage writes are done in, in synchronous with uh, writes to the, to the flash before notifying the application. <clears throat> so now if we were to plot these uh, two write back policies in the nice 3D plot that we showed with the three dimensions, we will see that uh, write through uh, fits in a complete different extreme of uh, write back. In one side we have write through, which is uh, slow, provides consistency, and has no staleness. And on the other side we'll have write back, which is faster, uh, has no consistency guarantees and uh, some staleness. So in this uh, vast spectrum, we, we looked for some other options and, and we couldn't find it in terms of caching. But uh, interestingly, we found a similar uh, um, problem and solution in the field of uh, asynchronous, asynchronous remote up, uh, mirroring. Their writes are delaying, making better use of uh, network bandwidth. Uh, but this is at the cost of uh, delaying the updates. That is uh, at the cost of uh, having, to, having to have uh, RPOs, uh, recovery objective points, uh, higher than, than zero. Uh, that is, uh, some applications have to, have to consider staleness. But uh, a study by, uh, by Keaton showed that uh, there are actually many applications that can tolerate staleness, for example, um, uh, simple uh, file servers or uh, virtual desktops and or, um, or uh, social network data, data servers. <clears throat> so we follow a similar approach. We also trade off uh, stainless for higher performance on, on, on writeback. Uh, we want to uh, design a new writeback policy. Uh, so the, the, these are the first characteristics, the four characteristics that we want out of this new write back policy. We first uh, want to be able to at least provide point in time consistency. Second, we want to get uh, all the performance benefit that we got from a traditional write back and we can do this by first uh, uh, being able to send the writes to the network storage in the background. Uh, second, write coalescing and finally um, parallel evictions. So we saw an example that the main issue with uh, traditional write back was that it was reordering the evictions to the network storage. And uh, in fact, uh, a key characteristic, a key property that most file systems and databases need in order to provide reliability is that these writes, or the writes are, are made in order. So this is the basis for the, for the first write back policy that we propose, which is actually <coughs> store the ordering of the writes to the flash and then uh, evict, them, evict them using the same order. <clears throat> uh, we store the fact that a write is issued after, the, after another one completes. And uh, we, we just store the dependency and invariant that we have to maintain on evictions. And it, I mean, as you can see, this is uh, just best effort. We cannot have all the dependencies from the applications. We are not touching the applications. And we might be losing some uh, parallelism opportunities. Uh, this figure shows uh, some example of uh, this uh, 
issue, completion issue invariant, for example, we can see that um, the issue of block two happens only after the completion of uh, block one. We maintain this uh, information and use them on, on the eviction. We maintain this information using a, a graph. In this case, for example, we can see that uh, the eviction of block two will depend on the eviction of block one. And we can also see that there is no dependency between block two and block three. That means that they can be sent in parallel. <clears throat> so let's see um, what happens uh, for ordered write back uh, without example. Let's say uh, we're running an application, we have to evict something, and uh, LRU tells us that the block to evict, the least important block, is uh, let's say block two. So we take a look at the graph and we see that block two depends on a whole other whole bunch of other uh, uh, evictions. So we perform all these evictions and finally evict block two. <clears throat> and this example shows uh, a big problem with this approach, which is that in this case, as you can see, block two has to be evicted twice, and even worse, it has to be stored twice. So there is no right coalescing in the case of uh, ordered write back. And uh, this can be solved with a, with a simple solution which is to evict all, these, all of these blocks atomically using a, a write group interface so similar to, to what is described in the logical disk, logical disk work. And uh, in this way, everything before the transaction is, is consistent, everything after the transaction is still consistent, and we, if we crash in the middle of the transaction, we just uh, discard the, the uncommitted transaction. Uh, we implemented this in a journal write back by using a, a journal uh, on the network storage. In this case, a host will start a transaction, uh, send a group of writes to the network storage, and finally a commit, and then the network storage in the background will checkpoint these transactions to their final position on, on, on disk. And in this case, uh, if, for example, we just crash in the middle of a transaction, uh, transaction uncommitted transactions are just uh, discarded. <clears throat> So um, until now, I'll be, I've been describing um, a failure on the host side where the SSD cannot be, recover, cannot be recovered, but what about the case where we can actually restart the host and read all the contents that we had in the, in the flash? So what we really need is just a, a mapping between the network storage blocks and the blocks in the flash, but we cannot take the luxury of actually uh, writing a mapping operation at every new write allocation. So we group writes in uh, transactions, and uh, at, commit, uh, at the commit, we just write the ordering with the commit block. <clears throat> uh, we refer to both these two um, journals together as the journal write back policy. Uh, having these two journals gives us a, a nice property, which is uh, dual uh, staleness control. We have two types of staleness and two knobs to control, it, to control them. One type of staleness is uh, the staleness that occur when the host uh, crashes and the SSD is recoverable. This staleness is controlled by the frequency of commits on the host side. That is uh, how large are the transactions in the host side. And the second staleness occur when the, <clears throat> occur when the host is, uh, is restarted. The host cannot be restarted and we, can, and we lose the contents of the, of the flash. And uh, this type of uh, staleness is controlled by the frequency of the change points to the, to the network storage, as you can see in the figure. <clears throat> so um, after... Um, a host, uh, sorry, after a, cross, a host uh, crashes, both uh, journal and order write back are able to provide a consistent state of the content at some point in the past. Therefore, they provide point in time consistency. We see that write back, uh, sorry, uh, order write back and uh, journal write back can provide uh, point in time consistency. And uh, write true, on the other hand, uh, provides uh, transactional consistency that it is uh, at the block layer. <clears throat> and a third type of consistency, which is uh, actually stronger, is uh, application consistency. And this uh, is a type of consistency 
th this really uh, being able to provide after a crash a, a state consistent, uh, semantically consistent with application. And uh, application consistency can be easily uh, provided by modifying the journal write back by providing the applications with an API to synchronously commit uh, unfinished transactions to the host side journal and the storage side journal. <clears throat> so, um, some uh, evaluation. Um, we implemented this cache on Linux as a Linux kernel module, uh, the block layer. We intercept every, every I.O. And um, we used uh, 4K pages block sizes and used uh, ARC as the replacement algorithm. And um, uh, we used uh, local SSD uh, and enterprise class SSD. In this case, we used uh, OCZ, PCI Express. And uh, we used iSCSI, we modified the enterprise iSCSI target implementation to have um, journal side transactions. And uh, we used an array of two disks at 7,000 RPMs. And finally, we used uh, the following set of workloads for, for evaluation. We used uh, Postmark, uh, FileBench, file server, TPCC, an OLTP workload, and YCSV, which is a uh, Yahoo, uh, a Yahoo uh, workload generator for key value stores. <clears throat> and uh, in this uh, next figure, I'll show some uh, performance data comparing uh, all four uh, write-back policies and some analysis. And uh, finally, I'll show how we can control staleness in the journal write-back policy. <clears throat> Uh, the following figure uh, shows um, normalized throughput, uh, normalized to uh, write through uh, throughput on the y-axis. And uh, we show this for uh, all four write-back policies. Uh, that is uh, write through, write back, journal write back, and ordered write back. And we show this for all workloads and three variants of uh, YCSB. The first uh, interesting, of, uh, interesting observation that we can make here is that, um, <clears throat> well, in all cases, uh, write through has the, the worst performance. Uh, that is expected because, uh, as we saw before, uh, writes have to be sent uh, synchronously to the slower network storage. <clears throat> and uh, now we will see some uh, interesting. Um, observations uh, one by one. The first one is this one, that, 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 was, that was the expected uh, behavior, where uh, write through performs the worst, write back, traditional write back performs the best, and we have order, write back, and journal write back, just, just after, it, after it in the middle. Uh, this is expected, uh, because uh, first, we, we don't expect journal write back to perform better than uh, write back, traditional write back, because uh, uh, it has some limitation on the number of dirty blocks. And also, we didn't expect uh, order write back to perform better than journal write back because uh, it doesn't have write coalescing. So this is the expected result. But we actually saw some uh, different numbers. For instance, in this case, in the case of uh, YCSBB, we saw that <coughs> journal write back has actually um, better performance. And the reason for this is that in this implementation, uh, traditional write back doesn't have a background flusher, and the uh, journal write-back has a, a background uh, process which is uh, committing and, and, and checkpointing um, uh, writes in, in the background. So by doing this, uh, journal write-back is able to, to batch more writes and send more in parallel to the network storage and then getting more throughput, and finally, uh, better application performance. Another exception to what we expected uh, was, in this case, YCSB uh, F. And this is, uh, first, this is a write-intensive workload, a write-intensive uh, variant of YCSB. And uh, in this case, we saw that uh, ordered write-back has the best performance, and that was unexpected. And the main reason for this, at least, uh, to be better than a traditional write-back was that um, first it was a write intensive workload and uh, the writes nicely followed the order on the, on the LRU. So, um, so that, mean, that meant that whenever we had to evict something, uh, 
most, most of the times uh, the eviction didn't require to clean something before. It, it, most rights to evict didn't have any dependency. And another inter interesting observation here is that uh, order right back performs better than journal right back. And journal right back actually performs worse than traditional right back. The reason for this specific case was that uh, in, this, in this situation we didn't uh, set up the journal uh, correctly. The journal size was just too small and therefore uh, the application suffered because of a too limited number of dirty blocks in the cache. <clears throat> So now let's study uh, the performance of uh, file server file bench in more detail. In this case, we have uh, performance as operations per second as we increase the size of the cache from 0.5 gigabytes to 2.5 gigabytes. Uh, the first observation we can make is that there is a very uh, low uh, slope in the case of write through. This is because this, uh, this workload was mostly write intensive and write through by not caching writes was not getting much benefit as we increase the size of the cache. Uh, now let's divide the observations first for the case where we have uh, a large cache sizes. And it's important to notice here that um, the working size of these applications was 2.3 gigabytes. So in this case, let's see what happens when we have uh, uh, caches close to the working set size. Uh, this shows uh, the expected behavior, which is uh, write back and journal write back having the best performance, followed by ordered write back and, and, um, and uh, write through. And we observed that this was uh, inversely proportional to the number of uh, writes to the network storage, which, can be, uh, which is shown in the figure in the bottom. That's uh, network storage writes. Uh, now let's see what happens in the case of uh, small caches. In the case of small caches, we, we can observe that um, write through and uh, journal write back has the best performance, but traditional write back and ordered write back has uh, very noticeable uh, performance overhead. In the case of uh, traditional write back, the reason for this is um, write allocations. These are uh, writes that need some block, that in most cases need some block to be, to be evicted from the cache before the, the writes can be, can be performed. And uh, in the case of this write back implementation, we didn't have any background flusher cleaning up pages. So in most of the cases, uh, these write backs suffer from having to, to perform an extra write to the network storage before being able to, to write to the flush. And uh, this can be seen in the figure in the bottom, which shows the fraction of the writes that were write allocations. As you can see, uh, up to, from, z from 0 0.5 up to five, uh, up to, uh, 1.5 uh, uh, cache size, uh, we see that there is uh, a big amount of, uh, of write allocations, and uh, these are impacting the traditional write back, and as you see, the, the point after where we get better performance for it is just after we have almost zero write allocations. And uh, well, and now for um, ordered write back, the reason for it to perform uh, worse is that uh, Across the whole cache uh, range, the, across the whole across the whole figure, um, because of uh, write coalescing, uh, ordered write back was uh, was suffering uh, was had an overhead of uh, almost 200 operations per second, so that's why it's performing worse at this point than a uh, write through. <clears throat> um, yeah, uh, well, the, then we perform a simple experiment to to see how we can control. Uh, performance by controlling uh, staleness. Uh, this shows how we are able to trade off performance for some staleness. In this case, we limit the, the transaction size at the network storage, uh, and we vary this uh, from, uh, from one to a large value. Uh, in this case, um, 500 megabytes. And in this case, we can see that we are able to to control the, the, the throughput as something similar to write through to something similar to write back. In the case of write through, it's because uh, when the, uh, the transaction is very small, let's say it was one, that means that um, we're really performing the way as write through is. <clears throat> Finally, uh, summary and conclusions. Uh, in summary, we, uh, well, in, in this paper, we saw that. Um, 
there are many dimensions to compare, uh, in order to compare the uh, right policies. We showed that uh, right back and right through are just two extremes in the whole possible range of uh, right policies that there can be. Uh, we proposed three new uh, right back policies. One is ordered right back, in which we have a point in time consistency at some uh, performance uh, reduction. Then, uh, journal and right back, where we have almost no performance reduction, but uh, we have, we need to modify the network storage to provide um, atomic group rights. And finally, we saw that uh, application consistency can be provided by modifying uh, journal right back to provide, to, to get application hints. Um, thank you. Uh, Wang Guang Wang from Ampo. Uh, so in your ordered right bank policy, you carefully maintain a dependency of rights depending on their completion time. So I wonder whether this is really necessary because when these rights get to the hard drive, once those rights uh, reach the track cache, they acknowledge the, the rights and the hard drive is free to reorder the rights. So the rights can come, can reach the media in any order, unless there is a flash track cache command in between. So I wonder, uh, did you check whether, did you look at just using a flash track cache command as a barrier instead of maintaining a careful dependency between all the rights? Um, actually, I, I don't quite understand the question how, uh, how can you reorder the evictions if you don't maintain this disorder in somewhere? Because hard drive doesn't have such a strong order guarantee. So no matter how, how strong order guarantee you maintain at the right bank cache, when it gets to the media, it can happen in any order. So you're saying that the, these will reorder things anyway, so there is no, we shouldn't I mean, care about actually saving things in order to the disk? Yeah, so what if you just use a flash train cache command as a barrier? Then between any two flash train cache command, you just freely reorder all the rights and coalesce them. Wouldn't that be easier? Uh, well, if, if that is the case, yeah, but um, that's really not the case, right? I mean, um, Whatever, whatever you send to the, to the disk for writing will stay in a cache, and hopefully this cache is not non-volatile, and that's really storing the, everything that you sent in order, right? But, okay. <clears throat>